In this video, we are going to learn how to do networking via using the very useful library Redbubble. Just before I start, I need to say that we will have other videos on Retrofit in future because it's a very useful library and you can do a lot with Retrofit. But in this video, we are going to have a quick introduction and uh, the basic get and post methods. Okay, before everything, I need to add the dependencies. You can search for Retrofit dependency in Android. You can use Retrofit with uh, Java as well. We are going to implement it in our Android project. Uh, from this GitHub page, you can find the dependency for Gradle. Also, you need to add another dependency into this Gradle file, and uh, that's up in here. Uh, this converter factory. You can choose uh, which of these you are more comfortable with. We have worked with JSON, so I'm going to use JSON uh, in my project. But uh, I tried this line of dependency and uh, it doesn't seem to work. So let's search for JSON converter factory. We will see how we are going to uh, use it. JSON converter dependency. The first link in here. Uh, I added this line of code and uh, it doesn't work as well. Let's add it in our project and see what error it gives me. As you can see, I'm getting some errors in here. And uh, the warning says that a newer version of this uh, library is available. They say that by the time the newer version is 2.5.0, let's change this latest version to 2.5.0 and uh, try once again. It has been added to our project successfully. It shouldn't behave like this because the uh, JSON library is on 2.8.5 right now, but it seems like they didn't update their converter factory. Okay, you just need to add retrofit and JSON converter factory or whichever you are more comfortable with from their GitHub page. Like before, in order to save your time, I created this simple layout file and uh, initialized uh, all the items. Let's take a look at that layout file. As you can see, it's a simple layout file, which you can uh, see your post. Once again, we are going to work with uh, JSON placeholder website. In order to uh, get our posts, I need to create a model like the previous video. I'm going to call it post. And just a simple model file, we have done it a thousand times. The next thing that I need to create in order to work with Retrofit is an interface called Retrofit Client, or you can call it whatever you want, but essentially it will be the endpoint of working with Retrofit. We will see how we can use that. I'm going to call it Retrofit Client, and it change the client to interface. In here, I can create the methods I need. For example, if I want to get only one post, I can create that method in here. It will be public, but we know that no matter what we uh, say as the access state of methods in the interface, all the methods would be uh, public. So I'm not going to add the public in here. The return type of our method is an object called call this interface that comes from Retrofit library. Call. In the diamonds, I will specify the type of object that will be returned from the web server. In our case, it's a post. I'm going to call my method get a single post. And that's it. I just need to specify the method uh, like previous video which was get by some annotation. Once again, it's coming from Retrofit library. I need to add the URL in here as well. I will add this URL later because we need to specify a base URL. I will explain that. You might wonder what this interface is. This will be the endpoint of all of your uh, 
call to the web server. You will create your simple methods in here, whatever those are. For example, if you are receiving a list of posts, a single post, if you are sending a post, if you are getting a post, all those methods will be defined inside this interface, inside this retrofit client. Next, in your main activity, you can create an instance of retrofit by saying retrofit, let's call it retrofit, is equal to new retrofit.builder. The beauty of retrofit is that you can pass a base URL once in one instance of the retrofit object and then use it uh, wherever you want. If you want to change your base URL, you can change it only once. The next thing is a converter factory. Dot add converter factory. I'm going to save it to JSON converter factory. So JSON converter factory dot create. That's all you need from JSON converter factory. You pass this because you don't want to be worried about parsing JSON to Java files and Java files to parsing. In retrofit, you don't do parsing manually. Retrofit will uh, do that all for you. Next, I need to build my object. As simple as that. I have an instance of retrofit. Let's quickly create a constant up in here for our base URL. DSFS as public static final string. Let's call it base URL is equal to let's copy the URL from a JSON placeholder. I'm going to put this whole address as my base URL and pass it down in here. Then I need to create an instance of this client. I can say retrofit client, retrofit client is equal to retrofit, our retrofit object dot create. And I need to pass my interface retrofit client dot class. Now that I have an instance of this client object, I can call different methods. I can say call once again of type post let's call it get single post is equal to retrofit client dot get single post the return type of this method will be saved inside this variable which is a call of kind post then I can simply enqueue that call get single post dot enqueue and uh, like volley it will enqueue your request and uh, we'll do the networking in a background thread. Inside this NQ method, I need to pass a callback. I can say new callback of kind post. And uh, it will override two methods for me, an on response and, uh, and on failure. And as the names are applied, this will happen in case something wrong happens. And uh, if you have a response, the response will be passed to this method. Let's add a logging in on failure. What the on getting single post t it will uh, throw a throwable. We know the difference between a throwable and an exception, so I'm not going to explain. Up in here, uh, this response has many useful uh, features. For example, I can get the response code in here, for example, by saying response.code. And uh, if you remember from previous video, we have different codes like 404. Uh, if retrofit object doesn't find the URL, you will see what other uh, codes are. Let's add a login in here. Response.code. Then with the help of this response, I can create a post object. I can say post is equal to response dot body. And as you can see, it will uh, return a post, as simple as that. Now you have a response from your server. Let's update the UI in here. This on response will happen in the main thread as well. So you don't need to be worried about worker thread and main thread txt title dot set text to post dot get title
If you want to review everything, first we created a model for the return type, return object that we are going to receive. Then we created this interface, in which is going to be our endpoint for uh, our retrofit. I just need to pass the URL in here. Uh, I don't need to pass the whole URL in here. Retrofit will use the base URL, and uh, we just need to pass the uh, root in here. For example, if we are going to get a single post, uh, like this one from here, I just need uh, whatever comes after that base URL. Also, be careful about the slashes. You don't want to add them in two places. I always uh, use slashes in my base URL, so I'm going to add it in here. And uh, as you can see, I have already added it. Don't add them twice because uh, those can cause some problems. After creating our client, I created an instance of my retrofit object with the help of this retrofit.builder. We needed to pass a JSON converter factory in here. You can customize this one as well, but we don't need anything from that yet. In future videos, we will work with customization of this converter factory. Then I created an instance of this retrofit client and uh, saved the value that is coming back from that method to a call object. After that, I just uh, enqueued that call, which will need a callback of kind host or whatever the object that we are going to receive. It will override two methods, a response and uh, a failure. In failure, we are simply going to log some message and see what the reason was. In our response, we are updating our UI. This response has some useful methods like this code and this body in which we can use for debugging our application. Okay, uh, the last thing that I need to do is to add internet permission in my manifest file and we should be good to test our application. Let's run it. And as you can see, we are receiving the data from that URL with the help of Retrofit. With Retrofit, you also can get uh, a list of items. Uh, but before I get a list of items, I want to say that uh, we can define an array list other ways as well. For example, let's define uh, a simple array list in here. Up until now, we have defined our array list this way. We have set array list of, for example, kind post. Let's call it posts is equal to new array list. We have defined all of our array lists this way. But instead of this array list, I can say uh, a list of posts. And as you can see, this list is an interface. It's not an object. You need to uh, cast that later on to an array list, but you can use it this way. List and uh, simply pass your object type. This is another way of uh, creating a new array list. Okay, I don't need it in here. In my retrofit client, I can uh, create another method in order to get those 100 posts. Let's delete this one from here. In this URL, we have seen uh, 100 uh, fake posts. I'm going to get all of them. For that, I'm going to create another method in here. Get with the URL posts of kind call. It's public, so no access state. Inside this diamond, I'm going to say a list of posts. It will return, as the name applies, a list of posts. Let's say get all posts. Inside this parenthesis, in here, you can uh, add different items. For example, if you need a key uh, for querying the database, if you need an authorization token, we will talk about all of those in later videos. We will work with uh, different items that you can pass inside these parentheses. For now, you just uh, need to know that you have much more capabilities with using Retrofit. Okay, I have created this method in here as well. Then, after um, this line of code, after everything, uh, I can create another call object of type list of post or whatever you are going to receive. Let's call it get all posts. Is a call to retrofit client our interface dot get all posts. 
Next, we need to enqueue this uh, code. Let's say get all posts of enqueue. Once again, you need to pass a callback of a kind list of posts. This on response and on failure once again. I'm not going to update any UI. I'm just going to log some message in here. One for the response code and another one for, let's say, the second post's item. Let's say code. I can say response.body, which will give me a list of posts or whatever the return type of this call is in here. Then I know that it's an array list. I can say that get. I can pass my index, which is one for our second item. Dot, let's say get title. As simple as that. Let's try it. If we take a look at the lock cat and uh, let's search for title in here uh, on response second post title is this uh, phrase in here and if you want to make sure yes the second item title is exactly as we just uh, saw in here it seems like uh, we are doing fine we also can uh, post objects by using retrofit by saying at post these are annotations that i'm using if you are wondering you need to pass your end url in here which if we take another look to uh, this website jsonplaceholder.com uh, the routes for post was only uh, this one in here i can say posts uh, after Posting a new post, I'm going to receive a post object. It's always useful for debugging. You can uh, return whatever you want in your backend, but uh, the typey code will return the exact object that you send to them. Of kind post, let's call it send post. Inside this parenthesis, this time I need to pass the item that I'm going to send to the server. I can say post post, but before that, I need to add another annotation called body. This body annotation will specify the kind of object that you are trying to send to the server. And by passing it before this post item in here, it will set this post to the object that is going to be sent to the server. Later on in my main activity, I can create another call of kind post, let's say send post this time, is equal to retrofit client dot send post. I need to pass a post in here, let's create one quickly, new post as ID, let's say true, no matter what we put as ID in here, we know that uh, IDs in JSON placeholder dot type dot com are Auto incremental and uh, they won't attend to our ID. User ID, let's say five, title, first post, and uh, the body. Hello, uh, I have a typo in here. I just need to enqueue this call. Send post dot enqueue. New callback. Once again, I'm just going to log some messages. One for the code, and another one for the item that you are receiving. Response dot body. We know that we return a post dot to string. Let's say, and another log for on failure. Let's uh, try running our application. Uh, let's take a look at the log cat and uh, the post that we are sending is this one. It has been sent to the web server and uh, this is the result that comes back from the server. Okay, I think that's enough about Retrofit in this video. As I said, you can do a lot more with Retrofit, which we will see in uh, future sessions. I think uh, in uh, external library session.
one of the libraries that we are going to dig into is this uh, retrofit. I'm going to end the session in here because it was a simple session. I don't think we need a challenge. In the next video, we are going to create our second major application. So stay tuned for the next session.